for India, I feel there are a lot, lot of opportunities in, in mobile still. I think you know, mobile, uh, mobile payments, enabling using mobile as a platform to do many different services. It's, it's been an economy that leapfrogged fixed internet and went directly to the mobile internet. Um, so I think we can think about many different applications, right? The other opportunity for India is actually to think about um, how education and healthcare can be uh, done better, right? You know, not just the content, but the access point of view and how we can actually um, enable broader, um, broader sets of the economy to have access to different healthcare solutions and education solutions. Anytime anyone goes off to create something on their own, that takes courage and that's innovation. So maybe I am a little bit more forgiving uh, for people who are creating Me Too apps than other people. I think I'm not a purist in terms of saying this is real innovation, this is not real innovation. I think anyone who has the courage to say, listen, I'm going to bootstrap this and I'm going to work on this and I'm passionate about creating something uh, to, in my book, is an innovator. And so I respect that in people. And, you know, it may be, you know, it may be a copycat solution, it may be something that you're emulating another model that's su successful in another model, that's okay. If you're a first-time entrepreneur and you're trying something to do on your own, uh, even if it's copycat, there's a lot of things you'll learn, and it's good learning to do that. Now, having said that, I feel it is, like I said, you know, I feel it's a great time in the industry where many things are changing. You know, the IT models are changing, the consumption models are changing, the access to technology is different now. Um, you know, the barrier to create something is much lower because a lot more things can be done in software, which used to be done in hardware, so the capital requirements are lower because of that. Uh, given all that, I think there's a real opportunity to disrupt traditional industries, right? So those companies that will last and, and become sustainable will be those that actually address something core, you know, something core in a business. Um, so I would encourage everyone to look for that core, um, core disruption versus just doing another app. People are really thinking about problems that haven't yet been solved. And I think if you come up with something, then you have an opportunity to start both here and in Silicon Valley. Um, you know, understanding that the market dynamics do require localization, right? You know, so I think that that is a key thing. With respect to internet companies having gone public on, on the New York Stock Exchange or NASDAQ, if that's the measure of success that we use, I would say China is ahead, right? You know, companies like Alibaba, Tencent, JD.com, bitauto.com, autohome.com, all these companies have done really well and created a lot of wealth in, in the entrepreneurial ecosystem and that wealth is going back to create other startups. I think India is just you know, catching up with that. You know, now we have uh, unicorns here and they have to go public and do well. And so you know, I think once that happens, hopefully that will be a, a cycle of innovation that will continue. So I would say probably you know, China is maybe you know, three to four years ahead of India, I think, in terms of that, you know, that category of innovation. Uh, every company has disclosed the data, it's about 20% women in the workforce, and in the technical workforce, it's less than that. It's about 14 to 15%. Women especially don't think of it as, can I have a career or can I have a family? I think go with the attitude, you can have both. I think when you go with the attitude, you can have both, you will have both, and you'll figure out you know, with your partner, if they're supportive, how to make it all work. But if you go with the attitude that I have to choose one or the other, uh, then it becomes a struggle, right? You know, and you're going to be forced to make decisions prioritizing one or the other. Now, on a day-to-day -day -day basis, you will prioritize, and I have prioritized also. You know, I think when my son was young, when he was a baby, there were times where I would miss meetings, important meetings to stay home with him because he had an ear infection or something, whatever babies have always. Um, but as he was growing up, you know, I think you feel more comfortable that they're fine at school. It's okay if I don't go to one parent-teacher meeting because I have an important um, customer engagement. So I think on a day-to-day -day basis, you do prioritize and you have to prioritize, but everyone prioritizes that, right? You know, men prioritize that, things as they work too, and it's no different for women. So I think if we go with the attitude that you know, I, I don't know why this question gets always asked. You know, men never get asked, are you going to choose your career or be at home? 
but women are always asked this. And so I think because we're asked that, we feel we, we are forced to choose. Um, and I think we shouldn't be forced to choose. I think we should be able to say, I want to have both, and I'll be successful at both, and you will be successful at both. I feel it's a good time in the industry to be doing something very different. So hopefully in the next two weeks, you'll hear what I'll be doing. But um, I'm very excited, and it's a very interesting time in my life because I feel like after you've accomplished certain things, there's yet, you know, you have more of a desire to go create something new. And that's what I want to go do.